Okay, this is the fourth and final video. In this video, we're going to show you how to take the parts you've already created and bring them into TorchMate and add toolpaths. So I'm going to go file and I'm going to open up uh, the recent parts, the strap and the triangle. Okay, so we'll start with the strap and what I want to do is I want to get this geometry into TorchMate uh, so I can add the plasma cutting toolpaths to it. So it's very simple to do. All I have to do is open a part file, and then if I select a surface, it makes it even easier. So in this case, I'm going to select this surface here. I'm going to go to File, and I'm going to Save As. When I go into Save As, I'm going to change my part type, and I'm going to look for a, um, a DWG or a DXF file. So in this case, we'll go with a, a DXF file. And I'm going to have it called exactly the same thing, and I'm going to save it in exactly the same folder, but this time I'm going to save it there as a uh, DXF. So I'll hit save. Now, so far it looks like I saved the part, but I haven't actually saved anything yet. When I go into the save a DXF, this is going to come up in SOLIDWORKS. So the question that SOLIDWORKS is asking me is, what exactly do you want to save as a DXF? And in my case, since I have a face selected, it's assuming that I that this face is what I want to save. And SOLIDWORKS has assumed correctly this time. Uh, otherwise, I can go into uh, annotation views and I can say I want to save just the top or the, or the current view. Uh, the current view would give me this weird angled setup, which I don't want. Uh, the top view is definitely um, what I was going for. Um, but if I wanted to, I could grab, uh, I could grab multiple views and bring them in as a uh, multi-view drawing. But again, the easiest way for me is just go with faces, choose that face, and then click the green check mark. When I do, it's going to give me a preview um, indicating that this is what it thinks I want it to look like. So here it is. Here's my preview. And that is, in fact, what I was looking for out of this. So I'm going to hit save. And this is when it actually finally saves the DXF file. So I have the strap saved out as a DXF file. So now I'm going to close the strap and I will open up the triangle. And in this case, I'm going to do the same thing again. So I'll go to File, Save As. I'm going to choose uh, DXF. I'm going to leave it with exactly the same name because the three letter extension that's going to follow it will be different now. So I'll hit Save. And it's going to ask me again, um, what exactly do I want to save as a DXF? I don't want the current view, I want to go to faces, and I'm going to choose this face here on the side of it. I'll click OK. It's going to give me my preview. Oh, look, a triangle. So I hit save, and now it actually does truly finally save it out. So that said, I am done with SOLIDWORKS for this part of the activity, so um, I can either close it out or I can minimize it. So I will close that part file, and I will minimize the software itself. Maybe I want to come back to it, we'll see. So now I'm going to open up the TorchMate software, which there should be a white icon for TorchMate on your desktop. So here I brought up my, uh, my TorchMate software. And now what I want to do is I want to go to File, um, and I want to Import. Um, anytime you come, come into a software package from another software package, you typically have to import uh, from one file in. So now I'm going to go and I'm going to locate where I save those those files, which oh, that's the wrong folder. So now I've found the folder where I save them. Hopefully you save them into your network drive. And what I want to do is I want to grab my shelving bracket strap, Davis DXF, and of course corner bracket triangle, Davis DXF. So I'm going to bring those in, and I suspect I'll probably have to bring them in one at a time, so that's what I'm going to do. So select it, hit import, and then I get this kind of sideways L shape. Um, this is telling me where do I want the top left corner to be. So at this point, I'm just going to click down and drop it anywhere. Um, and now it's going to give me some options. Uh, <coughs> since this was created in inches, I want the scale to be set for inches. Um, beyond that, it's really the only thing I'm looking to make sure of. And then I'll just click OK. Uh, when you 
bring things out of SOLIDWORKS, it's going to put a stamp on it. So I'm going to hit replace all and choose Arial as the font. If you just double click on it. All right. And so if I zoom in with my scroll wheel, you'll see uh, here's where it says SOLIDWORKS Educational Edition. Um, so that's why it was asking about that font substitution. So if I click off um, into the workspace and then I click and drag a box, I can select that SOLIDWORKS um, watermark and delete it. Because in this case, I'm not going to try and cut out a SOLIDWORKS watermark. But I do have the triangle, which I want. So I'll select my triangle. And for now, I'm going to set it up. So this corner here, which is represented by this node up here, is set for um, 0, 0. Okay. And, and if I do, one of the things you'll notice is that it actually put it a little too far down. So maybe I should use the lower left-hand corner in this case and set that to 0, 0. So I'll select this, select lower left, and set x and y to 0. There we go. That looks good. Now, my guess is your shelving needs two brackets. So whatever geometry you've created for, um, for your triangle, ultimately we are going to duplicate it. Um, but let's do it after we add toolpaths to it. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in that strap, go to File, Import, and I'll go to the same folder I was just in a second ago, and now I'm looking for the DXF. By the way, if you filter by file type, it makes it easy to find all the DXFs that you have. So in this case, I'm looking for shelving bracket strap Davis, import that, and I will drop that into place. Again, make sure it's in inches. Beyond that, everything else is good. Click OK. Um, font replacement has taken place. Yes, that's OK and click OK again. This again goes back to the uh, font from the SOLIDWORKS watermark. So I brought that in and if I zoom in on it, okay, I can click off, click and drag a box, and delete the SOLIDWORKS watermark. I want to make sure I don't go too far because I don't want to highlight any geometry. So now what I have, I have this strap which I know I need two of, and I have um, this triangle. Um, and the reality is I need two straps for each bracket and one triangle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first set up my toolpaths for the strap. So I'm going to start by right-clicking on it. I'm sorry, just clicking on it. So I'm just going to click on it to select it. And then I'm going to go up to my Arrange menu and hit Break Path. This will allow me to kind of ungroup the DXF that I just brought in. So now I can select these individual circles that I've got here. And by holding down my Shift key, I can select all six of them. And I'm going to go up to Machine, Create Toolpath. And in this case, I want to create a female toolpath because what I want is I want the hole to be accurately sized. I don't want uh, the little dot that would come out of the hole to be accurately sized. What I care about is the hole. So I'm going to choose a female toolpath. And since we're going to be cutting this in uh, eighth inch material, um, none of these templates really matter for us. We are going to go to basic cut. Um, I happen to know that with a 45 amp torch, uh, our best bet is to use about uh, 100 for our feed rate in inches per minute. Um, so I'm going to set it for 100. Uh, my power is fine, my assist is fine, and my dwell is fine. Um, make sure your tool is also set for plasma. There have been previous instances where in this class we've used the plate marker, but in this case the plate marker will not cut through the steel for us. I do want to do a lead in and lead out as much as I can, um, but there's only so much space, uh, so it's going to be very, very limited. I am going to set it for an arc, and I'll set it for a distance of 0 0.09 inches. Um, I'm not going to do a lead out. So now I'll click OK. And it doesn't look like much of anything, but if I go to View, uh, Show Toolpaths, in fact, I'll do Show Toolpaths only, you'll see I have some toolpaths here. And if I click on it, 
I can actually edit uh, by double clicking. I can zoom in here and I can edit the toolpath if I want to. So I can modify um, how it goes through and runs the toolpath. Um, in this case, I don't want to do that, so I'm going to hit Escape, um, Control C. Um, and you'll have to hit Apply ultimately to get out of the edit. So now I have the toolpaths uh, for those. You'll notice when I hit Show Toolpaths Only, there's nothing else on my page. And the reason for that is because Showing Toolpaths only shows that which you've created machining toolpaths for. So I'm going to go back to View and uncheck where it says Show Toolpaths Only and switch that to Show Toolpaths. So now I want to do a, a toolpath for the outside of the strap. So go to Machine, Create Toolpath. In this case, it's going to be a male part because I care about the size of the strap and not the hole it's going to leave behind in the part. So again, templates don't matter because we're reusing a platinum cutter. Um, this, would, this template really only matters if we were using this software to run a CNC router. So I'm going to go to basic cut, set my feed rate to 100 again. Um, I want it to roll around corners. Uh, my power, assist, and dwell time don't matter, but it should be set for climbing, it should be set for roll, and it should be um, of plasma. Go to lead in, lead out. I'm going to use an arc to lead in, and I am going to use a line to lead out. So I want both of these to be set for an eighth of an inch. And I'm going to click OK. So now you can see I have a toolpath that goes around the outside. And I'm going to do the same thing on the triangle now. So I'm going to go to my triangle, go to machine, create toolpath, mail toolpath. And what you'll notice when I go in here is all my settings are set up from the last mail toolpath I did. So I don't need to make any changes, which is fantastic for me. So the one thing I am going to do is on this one, I'm going to adjust the start point to the upper right hand corner. Um, this is different from most of the operations we've done, um, but just from knowing how our, our, uh, our CNC plasma works, uh, it seems to work better if you start off from this corner. This is where it will start um, actually running the torch from, but it's still going to index from the lower left-hand corner when we set it to cut. So I'll click OK on there. Now I have a toolpath going around the triangle, a toolpath going around the strap, and toolpaths going inside. Okay, so if you zoom in, you'll see they're inside of those circles. Now the reason they're not right on the same line as the geometry is because as you run the cutter, the cutter removes a certain amount of material. So this toolpath is compensating for that, so that way your part comes out an accurate size. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to View, Toolpaths Only, and I'm going to make me some duplicates. So I'm going to zoom out, and I want to make a duplicate of this. So if I hold down my Alt key as I drag it, it allows me to create a duplicate. And then I'll grab the triangle, hold down my Alt key. Not only do I want to drag it, but I'm also going to rotate this. So I'll rotate the toolpath um, 180 degrees. And the nice thing about that is it will allow me to nest that toolpath right in underneath here. Um, in addition, I'm going to need two more of these straps. So I'll grab these, hold down my Alt key, and drag off two more. So now I have everything I need to make my corner brackets. The only difference is whether or not you want to bring in some sort of shape um, to creatively cut out on the inside of your triangle. And I will leave that shape to you. So once this is done, we're going to go up to File and Save. And I want you to save out this document into the, manufacturing, the uh, Intro to Design Manufacturing folder on the graphics drive. And what we'll do is we'll create a new folder here for you, and we'll call this Activity Drive. So once you have yours saved into the shelving bracket torchmate files, then you're ready to go over to the plasma cutter and we'll cut it 